About Womb Cancer Cancer of the womb, uterus, is a common cancer that affects the female reproductive system. It's also called uterine cancer and endometrial cancer. Abnormal vaginal bleeding is the most common symptom of womb cancer. If you have been through the menopause, any vaginal bleeding is considered abnormal. If you have not yet been through the menopause, unusual bleeding may include bleeding between your periods. You should speak to your GP as soon as possible if you experience any unusual vaginal bleeding. While it's unlikely to be caused by womb cancer, it's best to be sure. Your GP will examine you and ask about your symptoms. They will refer you to a specialist for further tests if they suspect you may have a serious problem, or if they are unsure about a diagnosis. Types of Womb Cancer The vast majority of womb cancers begin in the cells that make up the lining of the womb, called the endometrium, which is why cancer of the womb is often called endometrial cancer. In rare cases, womb cancer can start in the muscles surrounding the womb. This type of cancer is called uterine sarcoma and may be treated in a different way from endometrial cancer. This article uses the term womb cancer and mostly includes information about endometrial cancer. Read more information about soft tissue sarcomas. Womb cancer is separate from other cancers of the female reproductive system, such as ovarian cancer and cervical cancer. Why does womb cancer happen? It's not clear exactly what causes womb cancer, but certain things can increase your risk of developing the condition. A hormone imbalance is one of the most important risks for womb cancer. Specifically, your risk is increased if you have high levels of a hormone called estrogen in your body. A number of things can cause this hormone imbalance, including obesity, diabetes, and hormone replacement therapy (HRT). There is also a small increase in the risk of womb cancer with long-term use of the breast cancer drug tamoxifen. It's not always possible to prevent womb cancer, but some things are thought to reduce your risk. This includes maintaining a healthy weight and the long-term use of some types of contraception. How is womb cancer treated? The most common treatment for womb cancer is the surgical removal of the womb, hysterectomy. A hysterectomy can cure womb cancer in its early stages, but you will no longer be able to get pregnant. Surgery for womb cancer is also likely to include the removal of the ovaries and fallopian tubes. Radiotherapy or chemotherapy are also sometimes used, often in conjunction with surgery. A type of hormone therapy may be used if you are yet to go through the menopause and would still like to have children. Even if your cancer is advanced and the chances of a cure are small, treatment can still help to relieve symptoms and prolong your life. Living with Womb Cancer Living with cancer is challenging and womb cancer can affect your life in specific ways. For example, your sex life may be affected if you have a hysterectomy. You may find it physically more difficult to have sex and have a reduced sex drive. You may find it beneficial to talk to other people about your condition, including family members, your partner, or other people with womb cancer. Who is affected? Womb cancer is the most commonly occurring cancer of the female reproductive system. It's the fourth most common cancer diagnosed in women after breast cancer, lung cancer, and cancer of the colon and rectum. Womb cancer is more common in women and anyone with a womb who has been through the menopause. Most cases are diagnosed in women and anyone with a womb aged 40 to 74. Symptoms of Womb Cancer the most common symptom of womb cancer is abnormal bleeding from the vagina, although most people with abnormal bleeding don't have cancer. Bleeding may start as light bleeding accompanied by a watery discharge, which may get heavier over time. Most women and anyone with a womb diagnosed with womb cancer have been through the menopause, so any vaginal bleeding will be unusual. In women and anyone with a womb who hasn't been through the menopause, unusual vaginal bleeding may consist of 1 periods that are heavier than usual. 2. Vaginal bleeding in between normal periods. Less common symptoms include pain in the lower abdomen, tummy, and pain during sex. If womb cancer reaches a more advanced stage, it may cause additional symptoms. These include 1. Pain in the back, legs, or pelvis. 2. Loss of appetite. 3. Tiredness. 4. Nausea. When to seek medical advice. 
If you have postmenopausal vaginal bleeding, or notice a change in the normal pattern of your period, visit your GP. Only 1 in 10 cases of unusual vaginal bleeding after the menopause are caused by womb cancer, so it's unlikely your symptoms will be caused by this condition. However, if you have unusual vaginal bleeding, it's important to get the cause of your symptoms investigated. The bleeding may be the result of a number of other potentially serious health conditions, such as 1. Endometriosis, where tissue that behaves like the lining of the womb is found on the outside of the womb. 2. Fibroids, non-cancerous growths that can develop inside the uterus. 3. Polyps in the womb lining. Other types of gynecological cancer can also cause unusual vaginal bleeding, particularly cervical cancer. Causes of womb cancer. It's not known exactly what causes womb cancer, but certain things can increase your risk of developing it. Cancer begins with a change, mutation, in the structure of the DNA in cells, which can affect how they grow. This means cells grow and reproduce uncontrollably, producing a lump of tissue called a tumor. If left untreated, cancer can grow and spread to other parts of your body, either directly or through the blood and lymphatic system. Increased risk. A number of things have been identified that increase the risk of developing womb cancer. Age. The risk of developing womb cancer increases with age. The majority of cases occur in women and anyone with a womb aged 40 to 74. Estrogen. The risk of developing womb cancer is linked to the body's exposure to estrogen. Estrogen is one of the hormones that regulate the reproductive system. 1. Estrogen stimulates the release of eggs from your ovaries and causes the cells of the womb lining to divide. 2. Progesterone gets the lining of your uterus ready to receive the egg from the ovaries. The levels of estrogen and progesterone in your body are usually balanced with each other. If estrogen isn't kept in balance by progesterone, the level in the body can increase. This is called unopposed estrogen. After the menopause, the body stops producing progesterone. However, there are still small amounts of estrogen being produced. This unopposed estrogen causes the cells of the endometrium to divide, which can increase the risk of womb cancer. Hormone Replacement Therapy HRT. Because of the link between increased levels of unopposed estrogen and womb cancer, estrogen-only hormone replacement therapy HRT, should only be given to those who have had their womb surgically removed hysterectomy. In all other cases, both estrogen and progesterone, combination HRT, must be used in HRT to reduce the risk of womb cancer. Being overweight or obese. As estrogen can be produced in fatty tissue, being overweight or obese increases the level of estrogen in your body. This significantly increases your chances of developing womb cancer. Women and anyone with a womb who is overweight is three times more likely to develop womb cancer compared with those who are a healthy weight. One way to assess whether your weight is healthy is to understand your healthy body mass index, BMI. Reproductive history. Women and anyone with a womb who has not had children are at a higher risk of womb cancer. This may be because the increased levels of progesterone and decreased levels of estrogen that occur during pregnancy have a protective effect on the lining of the womb. Tamoxifen. Women and anyone with a womb who are treated with tamoxifen, a hormone treatment for breast cancer, can be at an increased risk of developing womb cancer. However, this risk is outweighed by the benefits that tamoxifen provides in preventing breast cancer. It's important to visit your GP if you're taking tamoxifen and experience any abnormal vaginal bleeding. Diabetes. Women and anyone with a womb with diabetes are twice as likely to develop womb cancer as those without the condition. Diabetes causes an increase in the amount of insulin in your body, which in turn can raise your estrogen levels. Many women and anyone with ovaries with type 2 diabetes are also overweight, which further increases the risk. Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome PCOS. Women and anyone with ovaries with polycystic ovarian syndrome PCOS, are at a higher risk of developing womb cancer, as they have high levels of estrogen in their bodies. PCOS can cause symptoms such as irregular or light periods, or no periods at all, as well as problems getting pregnant, weight gain, acne, and excessive hair growth, hirsutism, endometrial hyperplasia. 
Endometrial hyperplasia is when the lining of the womb becomes thicker. It may be increased risk of developing womb cancer. Diagnosing womb cancer. You should visit your GP if you have abnormal vaginal bleeding. While it's unlikely to be caused by womb cancer, it's best to be sure. Your GP will probably carry out a physical examination of your pelvic area, including your vagina, womb, ovaries, and bladder. They will ask about your symptoms, when they happen, and how often. You may be referred to a specialist in conditions of the female reproductive organs, a gynecologist, for further tests. In 2015, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, NICE, published guidelines to help GPs recognize the signs and symptoms of gynecological cancer and refer people for the right tests faster. To find out if you should be referred for further tests for suspected endometrial cancer, read the NICE 2015 guidelines on suspected cancer, recognition and referral. Transvaginal Ultrasound, TVU. Another test you may have is called a transvaginal ultrasound, TVU. TVU is a type of ultrasound scan that uses a small scanner in the form of a probe. This is placed directly into the vagina to obtain a detailed picture of the inside of the uterus. The probe can feel a little uncomfortable, but shouldn't be painful. The TVU checks whether there are any changes to the thickness of the lining of your uterus that could be caused by the presence of cancerous cells. Biopsy. If the results of the TVU detect changes in the thickness of the lining of the uterus, you will usually have a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. In a biopsy, a small sample of cells is taken from the lining of the womb, the endometrium. The sample is then checked at a laboratory for the presence of cancerous cells. The biopsy can be carried out in several ways, including 1. Aspiration biopsy. A small flexible tube is inserted into your vagina and up into your womb, and then sucks up a small sample of cells. 2. Hysteroscopy This allows the doctor to look at the inside of the womb using a thin type of telescope called a hysteroscope, which is inserted through your vagina and into your womb, allowing the doctor to look at the lining of the womb and take a sample from it. In some cases, a hysteroscopy may be used before dilatation and curatage DNC. DNC is a minor surgical procedure carried out under general anesthetic, where some tissue from the womb lining is removed. The tissue is then sent off to a laboratory for further testing. Blood test. A blood test can sometimes help diagnose womb cancer. This is because some cancerous tumors release certain chemicals into your blood, known as tumor markers, which can be detected during a blood test. However, this type of test isn't very reliable. The presence of these chemicals doesn't mean you definitely have womb cancer. Some people with womb cancer don't have these chemicals in their blood. Tests if you have womb cancer. If you're diagnosed with womb cancer, you may have further tests to help determine the stage of the cancer. Staging the cancer will allow the doctors to work out how large the cancer is, whether or not it has spread, and the best treatment options for you. These tests may include 1. A chest X-ray, where radiation is used to check if the cancer has spread to the lungs. 2. Magnetic resonance imaging MRI, where magnetic fields are used to create a detailed image of the inside of your body to check if the cancer has spread. 3. A computerized tomography court, scan, where a series of X-rays are used to create a detailed image of the inside of your body to check if the cancer has spread. 4. Further blood tests, these are usually done to check your general health and how well some of your organs are functioning. Treating womb cancer. Health professionals use a staging system to describe how far womb cancer has advanced. These stages are 1. Stage 1 The cancer is still contained inside the womb, uterus. 2. Stage 2 The cancer has spread to the neck of the womb, the cervix. 3. Stage 3 The cancer has spread outside the womb into nearby tissues in the pelvis or the lymph nodes. 4. Stage 4 The cancer has spread to the soft tissues of the abdomen or into other organs, such as the bladder, bowel, liver, or lungs. Your chances of surviving womb cancer depend on the stage at which it's diagnosed. Treatment Overview the main treatment for womb cancer is to remove the womb, hysterectomy, together with the ovaries and fallopian tubes. 
This is sometimes followed by radiotherapy or chemotherapy to try to kill any possible remaining cancer cells, depending on the stage and grade of the cancer. Treatment if you haven't been through the menopause. Having a hysterectomy means you will no longer be able to get pregnant. Younger women who haven't already reached the menopause may not want to have their womb and ovaries removed if they wish to have children. In this case, under very specific circumstances it may be possible to treat the cancer using hormone therapy. Treating Advanced Cancer Advanced womb cancer requires a different course of treatment, usually depending more on chemotherapy. Advanced cancer may not be curable, but the treatment aims to achieve a remission, where the cancer shrinks, making you feel normal and able to enjoy life to the full. Even if there's no chance of a cure, surgery may be carried out to remove as much of the cancer as possible. Radiotherapy, chemotherapy or hormone therapy can reduce symptoms such as pain by shrinking the cancer or slowing its growth. 